What up, y'all? It's your boy Rodney Perry. This is Real Talk with Rodney Perry. And I have the unique and utter pleasure of talking to um, one of the most awesome comedians ever to touch a microphone. Ladies Thanks, and gentlemen, brother. Mr. Michael Collier. What's up, sir? Thank you, brother. Man, life, love, and God is up, man. You know, this adventure called dodging, ducking, and dodging the COVID-19 is what's up, man. Uh, we have been forced during this time to kind of figure out this social media space. You're doing some really interesting stuff. You're putting on a show a couple of times a week. Tell me about it. Well, you know, I do my, I do a, a thing called Sunday Funnies on Sunday, 3 p.m. Los Angeles time, where it's about getting people to try to relax and calm down. You know what I'm saying? I think that fear and nervousness and, and um, stress is more damaging to people right now than the actual virus. And so, so humor is important, brother. Yeah. Humor is healing, you know? They had this guy named Dr. Norman Cousins. Are you familiar with Dr. Cousins? I'm not, I'm not, educate me. Norman Cousins, well, there was a magazine when me and you were little bitty baby, you probably wouldn't even hear yet, but there was a magazine called Saturday Evening Post. Okay. It was that, It was around when Look Magazine was a magazine and, and, and uh, it was like the big magazine. So there was this guy who was the executive or senior uh, editor of that magazine, and he was told he had uh, six months to live because okay. he had cancer. He had went to the hospital to get a full checkup. They said he had cancer for six months to live. Okay. So first thing he did is he got out of the hospital. He said, if you're sick, you don't want to be in the hospital because everybody Richard is sick. Richard Bryce said, I'm going I'm to go uh, lay in the street where I can die and somebody can find my ass. That's right. Go. That's right. Go where you're going to be healthier. And there's too many sick people. They're coming in all times of night poking needles in you, giving you medicines that they can charge you up for that may or may not help you. So instead, he got out of the hospital and went directly to uh, one of the nicest hotels he could find and got their best suite. Because he said a suite in a fine hotel is cheaper than a night at the hospital. So he went and got the best hotel he could get. And he got a big old uh, big screen TV and rolled it in. And he got all the comedy he could find. Heckle and Jekyll, Laura and Hardy, the Marx Brothers, the okay. Three Stooges. And all he did all day long is lay there watching comedy and laughing and taking massive amounts of vitamin C. Vitamin C, pills, oranges, anything citrus. Now, motherfucker died anyway. But... <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't still about... <laughs> That was until about 23 years later. You know what I'm One thing about the Grim Reaper, he is undefeated. Oh, yeah, he's, he's undefeated. The Grim Reaper is undefeated. Man, you, Wait, you know what, Michael, I, I got to stop and and, uh, and thank you for, for – because what you're saying I know to be true because when I was in the hospital, you called me every day and gave me the joke of the day. Oh, brother, I remember that. That was yeah. cool shit, too, man. I'm yeah. glad you was responsive to it, you know, because, well, and it really did heal. It turned his life around. Um, he died maybe 24, 25, 23 years later. And when he finally died, he had become a professor at UCLA, and he had written seven books on it. You could just pull up Dr. Norman Cousins, and his very first book is about how to save yourself through vitamin C and laughter. So, I mean, it is a proven fact that humor is healing. So we don't want to stress out. Stress has killed more people or killed more people each year than the top four uh, causes of death combined. You wow. know? So you don't want to stress out. We just want to calm down. And so that's what my show is for on Sunday, man, to de-stress you, to let you know that it's still okay, it's still all right. The guy has never left the room. He's mm -hmm. still right here. You know, he and he's telling jokes and smiling and keeping hope alive, you know. And so we got to keep hope alive. So that's that's the main one I do. But I'm, I'm doing several, brother. I start a new talk show format. Wednesday, uh, okay. just like this, except it's going Instagram on a split screen, and I do one hour with somebody every week. So my first guest is Hill Harper, you know, who's wow. from CSI and the Good Doctor and Barack Obama. Really, Supreme. really nice guy too. Nice guy and smart. Big old brain on this little guy, you know. The following week is George Wallace. The following week is Guy Tory. The following week is MC Hammer. So we got the first four. Weeks. You got Hammer coming on. Yep. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to see that. Don't, oh, no, don't, no, no. don't. So, you know, so we, we trying to, uh, I'm just trying to talk to people across the board just about life, about their life and life and how to live it and how to, how to have the most excellent life you can, no matter what cards you're dealt. You got to be able to work with that. You know, I mean, I've always said if you 
If your life gives you lemon, you gotta make lemonade. But now you can't, you can't fix everything. You can't make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I wanna be clear on that. But but you can certainly make lemonade when you get the lemons, and at least you should be tried. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what my show is. Yeah, on Sunday. Mike, Mike, you're you're a con a consummate professional, and you've overcome so much in your life. Uh, whether it, whether it's narcotics, whether it's mm -hmm. you know different things we go through just on day to day uh, basis. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you attribute your stick to? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm blessed with a lot of drive. You know, I really did God, and I really have some visions. You know, I really want things. You know, I want things to happen. I have the. You know, I think you got to start out with a dream. You know, and you know what you have to do after you have a dream. What you gotta do? You, you gotta wake the fuck up. So then after you wake up, then you wanna work on that dream. So you know, <laughs> I have a dream, I have plans, I I have sort of I sort of mapped out what I want to accomplish. And you know, I do that through having a vision board. So you know, I have on the wall the things that I want to accomplish, but ain't none of it gonna just come to me. I ain't waiting for that. Ain't, you know, people waiting for opportunity to knock on the door. Opportunity don't knock on the door, it don't even come halfway across the street and meet you. No. Um, I'm sorry, I take that hat off and sweating like R. Kelly in the playground. So what I do is, um, is I just, I know, I strategize, I put out what I want to do, and then I get all the projects together, and I want to do a little bit on each project every day. Yes, so sir. the drive is to get up in the morning and try to accomplish a little bit more, you know, because when you work for yourself, this is my 34th year of working for me. Yeah. So when you work for yourself, you have to have mad discipline. You know, you got to get your butt up and go do the work. You, It's it's comfortable to just lay there. And if you're lazy, you're going to lay there with that remote control. You know, I have friends sitting in the basement, smoking weed, watching cartoons, and waiting for an opportunity. Knock on the door. It ain't going to happen. Gonna you got to get up and get it if you want to get it. You know, so I'm, I'm driven to want more, you know, to, to I, I mean, I also want more to help other people. I wish I had enough money to help people you know i mean i try to help now i give where i can but wouldn't it be great to be able to give a million bucks to a homeless charity uh, yes, sir. uh 10 million bucks to a homeless charity you know i'm going back out and doing my show i'm shooting my one hour special on venice beach where i started called yes, the sir. king of venice beach wow. and the way it ends is when i collect my money from the audience and i'm inviting my celebrity friends who all have threatened to jump on me if i don't let them know when i shoot it on Venice, including Samuel Jackson and, and Bobby Brown and Lisa Ray. I want them all in the audience, but I want them to bring checkbooks. So when I collect money, I want to collect cash and checks, fill a bag up with money, and go directly to this homeless shelter downtown where these two sisters named uh, Linda and Brenda are. They've been serving people for 23 years helping the homeless. And I want to and pull that money on the table, but at the same time, on the special, I want their address to roll up with the credit so people around the world yeah. can send money to this shelter. You know what I'm saying? So I want to do whatever I can to help other people because am I my brother's keeper? You're damn right, and my sister's right. too. But when I'm helping you, I'm You helping do me. some other things really well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you and I work together, at, and your merchandising is <laughs> unparalleled. There I is nobody that sells merch better than you. For the comedians <laughs> that might watch this, uh, give me the scheme. Give me, you, you, tell me, what do, you, what do you generally sell? And how do you, how do you, give me the pitch. Okay, wait, before I do that, I gotta say, it was Ricky Smiley who showed me that you got to sell the merchandise. Ricky Smiley, I was in Chicago at the Chicago Theater to see Frankie Beverly and Mays. Mm -hmm. Ricky Smiley was a 15 minute opening act. This dude came out and did seven minutes of jokes and eight minutes of selling merchandise, brother. Really? And I was blown away. He just sat on the edge of the stage and he talked to DJ and he said, DJ, yeah, put on my CD. He said, y'all, I got the funniest CD. I got, it's, it's me uh, doing pranks. He said, put on uh, CD number four, uh, track three. And then he just sat. And they played it, and they laughed, and he laughed. He rolled around, he hit the, what that, what that's good, but go, go to the one uh, in the funeral home. Then they put up, he just sat there and laughed at his own shit wow. for, the re for the next eight minutes. When I tell you he went in that lobby and had eight lines, he had one line was just to take a personal picture with him. He had one with a backdrop that aut with autograph pictures. He had one where people were selling CDs and DVDs. He had eight 
physical land where people land up just buying merchandise. Go back. I said, oh, no, I got to go get my money. I got to quit playing now. You know, right. and, and I tell you, Les Brown told me. Les Brown said it's about the merchandise. He said, I might make a million dollars doing motivational speaking, but I'm going to make three million selling keychains and, and mugs and shit. You know, he said, you don't want to stand ovation. You want a running ovation. You want them uh -huh. to jump up and run to the back of the room and buy all your shit. So with me, I'm selling, man, I'm selling everything right now. I mean, I have a, my third book just came out. And wait, let me tell you something. Uh, my podcast starts in May. The yes, first sir. Wednesday in May is my podcast. So one of the things is you can get all my merchandise if you send in the right name, if you give me the right name. So we got people trying to name the podcast. And right before I called you, one lady named Bagley Trina sent me a name called Sexy Beard uh, Podcast. The Sexy Beard Podcast. I, I just thought it was cute. Truthfully Funny, Michael's Elephant in the Room, Kalia's Comedy Corner, if I can say it, I will. Talking with, talking shit with the king, comedically real. I mean, so people send the names. I like the so elephant in the room. I like the elephant I, in the room. I like the elephant in the room too. I like and that. whoever wins is going to get all the merchandise. So I sell my first book on the president, Barack Obama. Funny thing happened on the way to the White House. I knocked on the door, brother answered. I sell my new, my poetry book, Miss Innocent Goes to Cool School and Other Silly Stuff, which is a poetry book for adult children. And then my pride and joy is my, um, I, got, I just got to show you this, is my, my book on motivational speaking. It's called Michael Goes Motivational. Okay. Uh, let me grab that real quick. It's that's called, the new, I that's know the new book. About this. That's, I've been prepped. That's it's the called new. Michael Goes Motivational. And it's motivational speaking from a comedic point of view by the comedic motivationalist. I so on this, on this, I'm telling stories about my life with motivational aspects of it and with jokes throughout. So that way I can also embark on a motivational speaking career across the country that goes with, with, with the comedy. Then I sell my CDs. I got a, a DVD with 40 comedians all doing pro-Obama comedy. I went out to live clubs and filmed. I'm white, black, young, old, gay, straight, transcendent, Asian, Hispanic, you name them. They all doing Barack Obama comedy, comedy by Barack Obama that is positive. It's mm -hmm. all pro. Because so many people got negative shit they want to say about two, who I think is one of the greatest presidents ever, that I want to do something that's totally positive. You know, then I got two yeah. CDs. I got one that's totally clean called Michael Collier's Back. You can play that for your grandma. Then I got one that's cussing, you know, and just back-to-back -back jokes like Red Fox style jokes. I had this woman write me day before yesterday talking about, Mr. Collier, when you're on our podcast, you know, can you just watch what you're saying? Because sometimes your jokes slip into sexual jokes. And it, this is not that kind of podcast. And we don't want our other our members to go away. And I said, bitch. I didn't join any group. I don't know who put me in the group, kick me out of the group. I don't want to be in a group where people <laughs> tell me what to do. So I'm saying what the hell I want to say. So so I do those CDs, DVDs. I got a T-shirt called the nigga shirt, you know, as N-I-G-G-A for naturally invoking God's greatest attributes. Okay. And so, um, honey, yeah. can you grab the nigga shirt off the couch real quick for me? Phrases and you've so never heard. Thank you, people, honey. So it's like naturally invoking God's greatest attributes. How do people, how do people find you, Mike? Uh, you can go. I was I always try to drive everybody to the web page because everything's on my web page. And it's therealmichaelcowyer.com. And that has everything. It also tells you how to reach me other ways. But basically, uh, see my show on Instagram Live which is just at Michael Cowley or Michael underscore Cowley or Facebook Live, just Michael Cowley. Bring your mama, Pookie, run, run, tell them all come. I do have a cash app, so I hope y'all send me some money because in a moment, I'm about to go rob some stores and I'm very grateful. What's the uh, cash the app? Man. What's the cash app? Cash app, dollar sign, Michael Cowley's money. <laughs> dollar sign, Michael Cowley's money. I keep it, I keep it simple, you know? I I'll thank you, brother, for inviting me this morning. Yeah. What a great way to start a day.